This video is part of a series. Complete the previous videos in this playlist before you start this video. The complete playlist information, the material and the code file information is given in the video description below. Now there are some data types where everybody will test your knowledge, especially your knowledge on list, your knowledge on dictionary. This is like absolutely important when you come to data analysis. Chapel set, we use them, but these are the ones that will come to your programs multiple times. You have to be absolutely very, very comfortable with these lists as well as dictionaries. We will try to see n number of examples. We will try to do n number of uh, problem statements in the assignments as well. So the first data type is a list, which is a kind of little complex data type that we are getting into. That is known as a list. It is a sequence of collection of elements. Sometimes there is something called arrays. List looks like an array, but it is not exactly an array. You can simply say list is a collection of elements. I have some elements. Usually I don't have a single data point. I have multiple data points. Earlier we told there is a guy called Sheldon. It's not just Sheldon. I have Sheldon. There is a guy called Leonard. There is a girl called Penny. Then if I have three elements, I would say my cust. My, there are three customers, Sheldon, Leonard, and Penny. And their age values are 30, 31, 27. If you have multiple elements and if you want to handle them in Python, or if you want to take first two guys, if you want to take the last guy, or if you want to access only a few elements. So if you want to take a collection of elements, you store them in a list. You define the list using this uh, square brackets. And in that list, let's say if I say customers is a list, how many elements are there in mean, customers list here? How many elements are there? In customers Three. list, how many elements are there? The number of elements? Three. 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 0, 1, 2, 3 elements are there. So if I say print the customers, this will be printed a list. Now usually what is the first thing that we tend to check? What type of element is customer? So for that, can you recollect what is the command? Can you help me with the command? What is the command to know whether customer is what type, data type is customer? Type, type, of type. type of customer. What type is it? What is Python telling you? It is a list. Let me define another list, age values. Now, what type is it? List. It is also a list. Now that you know indexing, indexing stays the same. In a list, there are three elements. I want you to access the first element. I want only Sheldon out of this customer's list. Can you tell me the command? There is this customer's list and I want only Sheldon out of that. I don't want to get everything. Only one element is required. Yes, Sheldon. Zero. Tell me the command. Tell me the code for it. Print cost zero. Print list name is cost zero. Are you sure it's going to work? Try it all of you. Tell me what is your output. Are we getting Sheldon in the output? Yes, Sheldon is the output. Perfect. If I want to get the second element, if I want to print Leonard, what is the code? Print cost one. Print cost one. Are you comfortable with indexing now? Let me say print cost one. It's Leonard. Are you with me? Let's say if I want to print Leonard and Penny, these two values, what will be the code? One. Print cost. Tell me. I have to write two elements starting one. with one. starting with what one, one included and then three can i write two is that going to give me leonard and penny is two included or excluded in indexing style excluded excluded so yeah. is it going to print this third element no no you have to put three, three here is that going to work it yes. will if i put only two what will happen this only will be printed. Are you with me? Or if I leave it, can you make a guess what will be the output if I leave it like that? Yes, Leonard Penny. Starting with what? Starting index is? One. One. And ending index not mentioned. It means automatically it is? Last one. Last one. Dead end. Make sense or not? So yes. what will be the output? Leonard Penny. Leonard and Penny. Now I'm defining one more string here called or list of strings called customer one and i'm adding two more values in that there is a 
another name called Amy. There is another name called Raj. Now, if I want to concatenate, can you tell me the concatenation easiest way of concatenation? I will say my final customers if I want to concatenate. First customers list is in cust. The second customer list is in customer underscore one. I want to concatenate both of them. Three plus two, five elements. I want to form a bigger list. What will be the option? Think easiest option of concatenation. Earlier so we, we have discussed. We'll take another one, customer three, and we'll uh, mm. add customer one and customer. We will put customer one plus customer two, is it? Let's say I will say final cust. Is that what you're saying? Final cust is equal to customer plus customer one. Customer is that one. going to work? Do you think final cust will have five elements? Let us try that. If I try it, cust one is not defined. You know what to do, right? What did yes. I do? Run it. Run it. Why am I making this mistake multiple times? Now, this is a genuine mistake. It's not to test you. Actually, I missed the running of it. Now, if I try to print the type of it, can you tell me what is the final cast? What will be the values in final cast? List. All the five elements will be there and it will be a list of five elements. Combining two lists, you just need to use plus. If you want to add right at the end, there is one more like whenever you are working on Python, what you will realize is there are two, three ways of doing the same job. If you want to add one more name right at the end, you can also use something called append option. I will say final cast dot append. I want to add one more name. Howard. So this is one more name, Howard. And then if I try to print final cast, it since it has not thrown any error, it will give me all these values. Okay. Try this quickly, all of you. These are all straightforward. I'm creating a list. There are some elements in that list. I'm concatenating two lists. I'm accessing some values in that list, accessing the values based on the indexes. Now I want to remove one element from this list. Let us suppose I want to remove this penne. This element I want to remove. Then directly you can use something called remove option. I will write final underscore cast remove penny and then if i say print final underscore cast the output would be sheldon leonard emmy raj howard penny is removed now let me give you a, a small kind of puzzle let's say if i say age is equal to it is having 30 how many times are there 30 twice age is having 30 twice now that is allowed. So if I try to print age 30, 31, 27, 30, 48, all of you focus on this. Stop whatever you're doing. Try to focus on this. Now, if I try to do this, logically, what is this operation doing? Age dot remove 30. What it should do? Remove 30 from the list. Remove 30 from the list. But 30 is appearing twice. So what is the expected output that you are going to get after doing this operation? Remove both 30. That's what both the 30. general expectation, isn't it? Logically, we expect 30 should be removed. But let us see what is uh, Python doing here. What happened? It removed the first 30 from the list. Have you understood what I'm trying to say? Now let me give one more 30 here, one more 30 here. Or one more 30 here. What is the, let us suppose this is age right now. Age has 33 times. Can you tell me what is the expected output when I execute this? How many elements will be there? Right now there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements are there in this list. If I remove 30, 30 appeared 3 times. Am I going to get 3 elements in the output? How many elements will be there in the output? 5. 5. five. The first occurrence of 30 will be removed. When you say remove, in the list, the first occurrence only will be removed. Are you with me? The general yes. expectation, what do we expect? We expect that everywhere, whenever 30 appears, it should be removed. Now for that, you have to write a loop. But if you want to use this remove function, you have to understand that only the first occurrence of this value will be removed. Now there are multiple ways of handling this. These are some of the ways that I'm showing you later on. We will see two, three different ways of doing the same option. Now, what if I do not know 
whether 30 is there in the index or I do not know what is the value, but I want to remove based on the index. Let's say I want to remove the third element and I don't know what is there in the third element. Let's say that is 0, 1, 2. So at index 2, whatever is there in index 2, that's what I want to remove. Whatever is there in index 2 or whatever is there in index 3. As of now, this is index 3. I don't want to remove this 30. I want to remove this 30. In index 3, that is what I want to remove. How do you do it based on, uh, let us suppose if I say age dot remove. And my index is what? This 30 is what I want to remove. Let's say 3. Is it going to work? Age dot remove 3. Is it going to work? No, sir. What will be the output? Value error. The value X is not in the list. That means 3 is not in the list. So remove is based on the value. If you want to remove based on the index, you have to use something called pop. And then whatever is the index that you want to pop out or remove that you have to put. What is the index that I want to pop out? I want to remove this, this one. Can you tell me the index of that 30? Hmm? Three or four, this one, this 30. Three? Three, three or four? Three. Three only, no confusion in that. Now, after that, now it is showing as what is the next element. Let us try to print age now. Let me just redo this once again. So 30, 31, 27, 30. And then if I say age dot pop. Three, that is uh, at third position, 30 is there. It is uh, giving you the item that it has removed and the rest of the age. The rest of the age is here. Am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let us suppose again in this age, just for the sake of clarity, I want to remove 48. Can you tell me the option for removing 48 in this age? Imagine this is your age list. I want to remove 48. Can you tell me the command for it? Pop three. Age dot pop three. Age dot pop three. Three. What will be returning once you say this? It will return what element has been popped. But if you want to print the rest of the age, it will print. Now you can also sort the elements in a list. Let me give you one quick example. Let's suppose I have a list called loans. So a customer has uh, three loans. A customer has two loans. A customer has four loans. A customer has zero loans. A customer has uh, six loans. A customer has uh, 20 is too much. Let's say eight loans, small, small loans. If you say loans dot sort, first of all, let us print loans. Print loans. Loans will be printed. And then try to print loans. Can you tell me what is the expected output? Sir, I think it's in ascending order. Yes. 0, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8. Now, what if I want to reverse that? Sir, what if loans, I want to reverse uh, that? Loans dot sort in bracket will write DESC. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, that is a good thought. Let us see whether it will work. So, I will write DESC, right? That's a good starting point, but it is DESC not defined because this is a variable that is searching. So I can give you a small hint here. So you can hover your mouse on sort. This function is there, right? You hover your mouse on sort. And then it will give you the documentation of that function. Can you see the documentation of the function? I, I'm keeping my mouse right now. My mouse I'm keeping. I'm hovering it on sort. Just keep your mouse on sort. Are you also getting this? Just try it. Initially, it will be a little troublesome, but uh, click on sort and leave your mouse there. Can you also see this window pop up? Yes, sir. Now I want to arrange them in the reverse order. Is there a hint that is given? Reverse to false. Reverse false equal to right. false is yes. reverse equal to false means was by default, it will give in the ascending order. But if you want in the descending order, reverse order, so this is the default value. What is the default value of sorting? If you ask for sorting by default, it will go with reverse equal to false. But if you want it in reverse order, then what is the change that you have to make? 
In bracket, to, we have to right reverse in bracket bracket mm -hmm. reverse equal to true if you say reverse equal to true then it will print in the reverse or it will sort in the reverse order if you write reverse equal to false what will happen that is anyway default value even without you writing it it will anyway do it in the ascending order if you want in descending order you say yes i want in the reverse order so basically ascending order is considered as the default order so if you want it in the reverse you say reverse equal to true you get it in the reverse order we haven't really gone into functions once i go into functions then i will tell i'll touch upon all these points very much in depth the focus is still on list the focus is still on strings i think uh, you got what i'm trying to say isn't it i'm not really focusing a lot on these functions once we get there before that we have to finish a couple of more concepts then i'll go through all these parameters what are these these are these are known as arguments keyword arguments and how do you work with these arguments all those things i will discuss in depth okay as of now just make a side note later on we will discuss very much in depth okay now here is a very important concept that i'm going to introduce right now this is uh, very much confused outside but once you see it carefully everything will be very clear let me define a list called let's say number of loans is equal to or let me say age is equal to i'm defining a list all of you stop whatever you're doing focus on what i'm writing here age is equal to 12 44 38 19 36 25 now i want you to quickly help me with slicing so if i want to print only 12 and 44 what is that I will write? What is the indexing that I will write? If I want to print only 12 and 44. So simply, we will first put the indexes. What are the indices? 0. This is uh, 1. This is uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. How many elements are there total? How many elements are there? 6. Now I want to print only 12 and 44. What should I write here in the slicing? 12 and 44 only. Zero. Age. Zero colon one. Zero colon one. Is yeah. that going to work? 12 yeah. and 44? No. Yeah. Zero no. colon two. Zero colon two. Now you cannot change Stop. your Stop. Stop. Oh, sorry. Like. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, you can say sorry to me, but your manager you will not spare this, okay? Maybe you are uh, ending up giving loans to the customers who don't deserve it. Okay. Maybe we are making like these kind of small mistakes may hamper a bigger business thing. Zero to two makes sense. Now, if I want to print only 36 and 25, if I want to print only 36 and 25, print only 36 and 25. What is the uh, way? Four, um, four, four and only colon also will work only colon will also work four is to six will also work i think a general practice general standard is if you want to print till the end simply four. colon and left alone that is a good option okay because you know like we don't know the ending right so if you want to print till the end leave it that way 36 and 20 i'll just ask for one more and then we will proceed i want uh, 38 and 19 38 and 19 so two four two is to four two is to four Starting mm -hmm. point is what? 2 and then ending point is 4. Mm. Makes sense. Now there is something called negative indexing. This is known as positive indexing. Python also offers negative indexing. Even though it is not required, but in some cases, you will see that some of the in some of the codes, people are using negative indexing, especially if you want to print last two elements or last three elements we tend to see negative indexing also. So the negative indexing works like this. Right at the end, you will start with minus 1. So if you want to access 25, you can write 5 or minus 1. After minus 1, this is minus 2. This is minus 3. This is minus 4. This is minus 5. This is minus 6. Even though it is confusing, even though it may not be required every time, but I still discuss this. The reason is sometimes in some of the code files, you may see negative indexing. And I want you to understand how, what exactly is the meaning of that. So now I want you to tell me if I use negative indexing, if I say print of age, 
minus one. Can you tell me what is the expected output? Twenty-five. Five. Twenty-five. If I give age of minus four, what is the expected output? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. It will be thirty-eight. You're on track. Now let us say if I give minus four to minus two. What is the expected output? Think carefully. Minus 4, 2, minus 2. 38, 19. 38, 38, 19. 38 and 19. 38 and 36. 36, why it is not printed? Again, the same rule. Exclude. And you write like this, including what? Including which index? First. Which is First minus index, four. last index. Last index. Yes. So why 36 is not printed? Is it justified, all of you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Like you can use this positive indexing, but I'm not saying that you should use negative indexing. But when you see negative indexing, I don't want you to feel like we never discussed it. Sometimes, very rarely, maybe 99% of the times people use positive indexing, it works. But in some of the advanced programs, people may want to come from behind. Last few elements, if I'm handling people, sometimes in some cases, it may be easier to handle the last few elements using negative indexing. So people tend to prefer that in some cases. So you should be good with both of them. Now, let us try to expand this. Let us try to get a better understanding of this. I will write this and I'll give you a few examples. You just interact with me and tell me what is the expected output for all of this, just to make sure that all of us are on the same page. So if I write print age 2 to 5, what is the output? Age 2 to 5. 38, 19, 36. 38, 19, 36. Makes sense. If I rate age 2 to 10, what is the expected output? 38, 19, 36, 25. Do you agree with that, all of you? Yes. All of you try to participate. I want you to think. Yes. And what is the alternative yes, to sir. that? If I say 2 and there is no ending point. Yes. Yes. What about this one? If I write like this, can you quickly think and let me know what is the output 12, of this? 12, 44. 12, 44. 12, 44. 38. 38. Now, again, you're changing your stance. 1244, 1244, 38 is also included because yes. starting point is 0, ending point is 2. 2. 0 to 2. 2. Makes sense. Now, if I write minus 2, 2, or let's say if I write minus 5, 2, minus 1. Can you think carefully and let me know what is the output? 44, 19, and 36. So once these indexes are in front of us, we can see them. But the confusion will come when those index numbers are not in front of us, isn't it? Initially, since I'm writing it here, it looks uh, cleaner. But maybe once you get an understanding from here, later on you have to think of uh, that without these indexes. Now if I put like this, now think carefully. Don't give me a quick answer. Give me a thoughtful answer. Starting position. First of all, I'm using negative indexing. As soon as I say negative indexing, what is the starting position in a negative indexing always? Minus one. Minus one. So where is it starting from? 25. 25. And what is the ending position here that I have mentioned? Minus 438. And will 38. it be included or excluded? Excluded. excluded. So included. what is the final output? 25, 36, 19. 25, 36, 19. Is 38 included or excluded? Excluded. 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 What is the output? 44. 12 and 44. Let us say if I give like this. 12 and 44. This is exactly what is opposite to our understanding. So usually what do we think? If I'm giving negative indexing, I will think I'll come from here. So it should be minus 1 to minus 4. But is minus 1 larger or minus 4 larger? Minus one. Minus one is larger. So can it happen like minus one to minus four? No. So let us suppose I said six or let's say I said six to two. Starting position is what? Starting Zero. position? Zero. No, here in this output. Okay. Six. Two. Six, yeah. Six. Six, yes or no? Mm -hmm. If you are starting at six, what can be the next element? Seven. 7, seven 8, nine, 9, or 10, like that. Let us suppose if I say starting position is 4, what is the next position that I can give? 5. 
फाइव सिक्स सेवन बट वाई इट इज नॉट गिविंग लाइक फोर टू टू इट शुड हैव बीन गिविंग मी थर्टी सिक्स नाइनटीन थर्टी एट राइट और नॉ बट वाई इट इज गिविंग मी एन एम्प्टी स्ट्रिंग हियर बिकॉज इज दिस एम्बिग्यूस ग्रेटर वैल्यू फोर इज ग्रेटर वैल्यू नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल नाउ योर लॉजिक वॉज आई विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम माइनस वन is it almost equal to the previous example that i have shown can i say this is similar to age of 5 2 your logic earlier logic this we equated to this one yes or no <clears throat> are you with me earlier when we said nothing is mentioned here this is minus 1 if it is minus 1 first of all this logic itself is it allowed which one is higher out of minus 1 and minus 4 Minus one. Minus, Minus one. one. So can it be starting point? If that is starting point, we have to give something higher than that, isn't it? That is yeah. the reason why it will always start from the beginning. Maybe right now it may be a little confusing. Initially, you will be using positive indices only. But when, if at all, you come across this kind of scenario, you should not think that I am coming from here because ideally it looks like we are comparing one with four, but minus one is greater than minus four. So it will not be coming from this way. It will be coming from zero. Two, four, or whatever is the minus four. This index to this index. Even if I don't give that, this one. Can you tell me why minus one was not considered once again? Why minus one was not considered? Why zero was considered? What is the risk of considering minus one? What is the ambiguity? What is against the code for considering minus one? A greater value cannot be put. Greater value cannot be the, like in a sequence. If you are slicing, if you are asking Python to give you a slice. You have to mention the starting position. You have to mention the ending position. Starting position must be always Small. smaller. Small. Like from the meaning point of view, starting position must be smaller. So instead of saying this zero, in fact, it is not even zero. I would say, technically speaking, mm -hmm. let us go one step ahead. It should not be even zero. It should be if this is the starting position. What is the ending position in terms of indexing? If you have to say. Minus six. Minus is it minus six or uh, little further? You have to think. Is it minus six? If I give minus six, what will be the output? Think about it. Are you thinking thirty-eight, forty-four, twelve will be the output? No, sir. Thirty-eight, twenty-four. It will be what? So it should be minus seven, isn't it? Because if I want to print these three, am I going to give three to five or three to six? Three to six. Three to six. Or I will just leave it alone, blank. So that way, so you can think that as zero. But a better way to think would be, if your ending position is this, the starting position will be much lesser than that, and the less side is on this side. Now, does that look good? Think about that logic. Is minus six smaller than four? Yes, sir. So this is the ending position. What is your ending position? Minus four. What is the starting position? Minus six. Like whatever, like either you can mention it or you can ignore it. Okay. Since we have ignored it here, the starting position will not be even minus six, or we can go further before that. But the starting anyway, it will be considered minus six will be considered. So we will take minus six as the starting position, which is twelve, and then forty-four. Since minus four is the ending value, this thirty-eight uh, will not be printed. Twelve and forty-four will be printed in this output. So the output of this, as well as this, will be the same. So either you give minus six, or you give zero, or you leave blank. So if you see here, there are three ways of writing it. Is zero to minus four. Now look at this output. Let's talk about this one. Starting position is six. Ending position is minus four. The output will be twelve to forty-four. Thirty-eight is not included. Makes sense or not? Is that individually making sense? This particular yes. line. Yes or no? Yes. Usually, it's a good idea to stick to negative indexing totally or stick to positive indexing so totally. Mixing is not a good idea. Okay. Sometimes you may get the output, but what kind of output the user has to understand that also we have to keep in mind. Now coming back to this example that we are saying, minus six to four is like uh, these three elements. Even if you do not mention anything here, because if you don't mention anything, it is considered as a starting position only till minus four. So both of them, meaning-wise, it is all the same. Twelve comma forty-four. Because the mistake that we tend to think is, since I haven't mentioned anything, the negative starting point is minus one. If I I'm thinking the output of this is starting from minus one. That is where we are going wrong. The reason is minus one is higher than minus four, so it will it will be the previous ones, not the later ones. But anyway, this negative one as of now.
maybe you can take a note that negative ones you will not be using them we will not be using the negative ones we will use the use the positive index in all our exercises mostly but negative ones why am i discussing in future if at all somebody is using negative indices i don't want you to think totally blank in that you in fact in your whole data science career you may not come across negative index at all but once in a while if you see that there is somebody who is using negative index that means they are coming from behind okay as of now just know what is negative index just leave it there we don't really need to really grill a lot into that negative index okay now the next exercise i want you to try this right after this session when you are going through these uh, videos i want you to try this create a list with these uh, numbers or these names okay create a list with these i would say names not numbers the names are stan kyle cartman and kenny change the value of kenny to butters kenny need to be replaced with butters this is slightly different from uh, what we have seen like you have to access that element how do you access it using 0 1 2 3 and then you will be replacing that with butters insert clyde in the second position after stan now this we haven't discussed in the classroom i gave you a hint i want you to try and fail a little bit and then finally get this now this is what will kind of will challenge you a little bit and you will like that challenge and then you will try to finish that remove butters but store it in a another variable called b earlier we have created a names we want to create another variable called b after removing it access the last three elements of this list using negative indexing just try the negative indexing by try to access the last three elements and then this is another example define a list using age how to reverse the items in the list you know that reverse equal to true and then sort how to access the minimum and maximum values of a list this i haven't discussed i want you to just try that okay like this is a small challenge you have a list how to access minimum value maximum value just search it in the internet you try to like this is trying to make you think let's say if there is some new challenge that comes up where you have not seen it how quickly you are reaching the solution these are all very very small challenges how to know the count of all elements inside a list earlier for a string i told you what is the function that you use for a string to know all the elements which function length. do you use length, length. so you will try that length again if it is working well and goes otherwise you will try to find out what is that and how do you access the index of a particular value inside a list so i have a particular value let's say cartman is there the index of cartman is 2 how do you access it so this is a small exercise that is covering a couple of uh, small functions that are beyond whatever we have discussed but the reason why i want you to do this is you will find a way to get answers and that is very important because this whole python is quite huge there is no way i can cover each and everything i have to give you a way to get the solutions for small small challenges so that you can work independently in future without anybody's help so this is a exercise are you confident in doing this maybe some of you can get the answer very quickly within 20 minutes you can complete this exercise some of you will take 45 minutes somebody may take 2 hours somebody may take 4 hours but don't leave it initially you will take 4 hours later on you will move into 1 hour window later on you will move into 10 minutes window if you are somebody who are thinking that sir coding is little difficult for me coding i have never done this is your last chance when you are with me learn in this structured manner i am trying to confuse you i am trying to give you different different options but i am making sure that you are learning in this structured manner so don't leave these exercises what i want you to do is immediately after this session go through the video do in classroom exercises once again do whatever i have taught you in the classroom once again and do these small lab exercises as well before you come to the next session are you with me everyone yes sir yes sir all right continue with the next video in the playlist we are covering everything step by step if you have any questions or the comments please post them in the comments window below